Where would I be without a 900? Um, eternally frustrated. I was truly considering quitting competitive skating in the year of 1999. It was like, just someone get this fucking trick done, you know? <laughs> Tony Hawk, without a doubt, the most iconic skateboarder to ever live. His signature trick, the 900, skyrocketed him to fame and fortune and cemented his legacy as the greatest to ever do it. Still got it. This is my wife, Kathy, and I at the Academy Awards. What's today the anniversary of? It's our anniversary. It's our wedding anniversary. Is it the anniversary of anything else? Nothing important. Um, my name is Tony Hawk. I've been a professional skateboarder for, uh, oh, 40 years. No, sorry, I got that wrong. <laughs> I've been a professional skateboarder for 41 years. There you go. I think the unique thing about the 900 is that there were a few of us chasing it, and none of us could figure it out. It stumped all of us and we were getting close. At any moment I thought I was gonna get a call like, hey, so-and-so did it. The first time I tried it was uh, 1987 in Bourges, France. I landed on my back. 89 was Danny, you know, he put it on the wall and that showed us, oh, it's possible to get around that far. And then the years after that, it was just spent spinning and slamming. My name's Rodney Mullen and my relationship with Tony is, man, just a good friend. I'm learning to street skate worried about crooked grinds, right? Nollie flips out, that's where my head's at. But everyone, the entire community, knew what was going on when everyone was after the 900 or all the vert dudes. You looked at it as something higher going after something more. I can't think of a trick that has ever had that much hype around it beforehand, nothing. I don't know exactly how long he was trying it for, but I think he had like eight kids in the meantime. Seeing him pursue that, and over the years, you know, he's been trying it for so long, it just became one of the most famous tricks in skateboarding. I think it was in Transworld, they did an article about the trick, like, this trick is impossible. Here are all these accomplished skaters, vert veterans that can't do it, and, and I think Sluggo was quoted as saying, this trick can't be done. Tony, uh, doing it for your pleasure, he's won the event already, he's gonna go off, because Tony does go to the 900! Oh! Oh, see 900, 900! I mean, I kind of put it on the shelf. I would say from the years 96 to 99, and then I made it my mission to do it for the Birdhouse video for the end. We shot that in 97, and I just couldn't commit to it. The 900 was supposed to be the closer. That didn't happen, which I was okay with because then I got the end part, you know? It was a little gift for me. There was something in the back of my mind because the first time I ever tried to really make it was on the plan B ramp and I went straight into the flat, broke my rib, and, and in my head I was like, that was the one. I was truly frightened. Tony is obviously so special, but then again, what it takes to land that thing it might be a function of structure, just simple disorientation, who knows? The best vert skaters alive chased it for 10 years. So it's kind of like a legendary fish. Everyone's like trying to catch Catfish Hunter. This was the legendary trick that everyone was chasing. If it happened in some like private ramp setting, I don't know if it would have made that much of a difference. But because it happened on live television, that was an opportunity for the world to see how much goes into what skateboarders do. I guess it probably wouldn't have been as big of a deal if it just ended up in a skate video as a after Black Hammer. The 900 then had such an impact because of the energy and the R and the video cameras and the TV, whatever. Having the stage at X Games really brought to light the struggle and the battle that he had with that trick. And I think a lot of people were, were able to relate. Someone else did it in a warehouse at a ramp, like it never even would have made a blip on the radar. Tony Hawk, that night, that setting, the way he did it, 
video game. You know, you couldn't write a better script. If Tony hadn't done it at the X Games that night, especially in that environment, especially in that moment of that environment, it would be hard to match. Oh, I'll take it, take the nine. First one. Would someone else's life have been affected as greatly if they had done it? Um, if they were shown with the same determination, approach, perseverance, yeah, perhaps it would have given them a lot of attention. I've never seen captured on film a clearer picture of what skateboarders have to do to get themselves to do something that they don't know if it's possible yet because it's never been done. That clip translated it for the masses. What you're seeing on my face through those attempts at the X Games is the realization that I'm closer than ever, and that's the internal dialogue happening and everything else is tuned out. I didn't hear the crowd, I didn't hear the announcer. I realized my peers were with me, but I didn't realize that they were so invested in what I was doing. I feel like that's the lightning in the bottle right there. It's just like the rare occurrence that something that great happens on live television. The battle for the first ever 900 was live on national television. Let's go back to that fateful night in San Francisco. This has really become a personal quest for Tony Hawk to master the trick that he has beaten himself up doing for a decade. The reason that I even tried a 900 that night is because it was a best trick event. I had done my best trick. I swear to you, in my head, I thought, I'll show them what it looks like to try a 900. As skateboarding does, often the crowd gets behind you and it, and it starts to kind of create this crescendo of like, ah, ah, he's gonna, he's getting closer. And Dave Duck goes on the microphone like, nine, nine, nine. I think the energy that that contest brought made it magical and I think it made the moment happen. Even though I wasn't the one spinning it, I put all my energy for that trick to land had all the elements of greatness. All the dudes surrounded around him, pouring their energy into him. People don't understand what a savage Tony Hawk is and how hard he will go. At the X Games, there was something that changed where it's like, I'm committing to these. I had crossed a threshold of knowing it was possible in that moment. It's gonna happen now or I'm gonna be taken away in an ambulance. Like those are the only two outcomes that night. That is the culmination of skateboarding. That's what skateboarding teaches you. Perseverance, determination, getting back up. It showed how truly unique skateboarding was. But it also showed the camaraderie. And I think that that is the key feature, is that my toughest competitors were on the deck cheering me on. What sport would you ever see that's like that? You don't see it elsewhere. That's skateboarding. You had the best dudes in the world who were lifting and encouraging and saying, go after it, go again, go again, go again, until he landed it in the unfeignable joy. This was the crisp resolution of what we have as a community that is unobtainable for any other sport. He made it, and by the time he could turn on that wall, we were all on the deck, we slid down to tackle him. Like, he can't make the next wall because we're just all running for him. For some reason, the only two people with video cameras that we snuck in were me and like Danny Minnick. I had no battery, if any, it was like flashing. I was like, when do I try and film this? Because it looks like this might go down. I was also using my backpack as a beer cooler. It was filled with beer and ice, it was a bad choice. But I remember he was already in the air on his second backside air, and I was like, I gotta get this. And I just looked saw him riding away and I was like, whoa, and the place went crazy. And I was so stoked, I just started running at him with the camera. Someone from Tony's camp had called me mentioning, do you have the footage? We know you had a camera there. But I was like, I don't even know. I have all these crates in my garage filled with DV tapes. I went through every tape and I got into the corner and there's this last few tapes covered in rat shit. And the last tape I opened, there it is. What I felt immediately after that was that everywhere I'd go, people would request it. And it didn't matter what the terrain was, kids would show up, 900! Or I would go on a talk show. If we build a quarter pipe on stage, can he ride down the stairs in between the audience and do a 900 upon his entrance? Like that was a request. This is the board I used at 99 X Games. This is the helmet I was using, and I donated it to a sports museum in San Diego that <laughs> subsequently closed. So that's why it's signed. I thought that the broadcast was over. I truly did. 
ESPN's not gonna extend their programming for a skate event, especially a best trick event. I went home and everyone's calling me. They're like, we saw it, like, you saw it? How did you see it? And they're like, they, they ran it. They must have had a lot of faith <laughs> that I was gonna make it. I don't think I would have that much faith. Have it all come down within that moment and my presence there and participation and seeing it unfold, you know, it was just incredible. There cannot ever be a trick as significant as a 900. What an honor it was to be a part of that moment that night. It hurled Tony in front of cameras, in front of celebrities of the world, presidents who brought him to the White House. Tony Hawk, the best skateboarder in the world. It put him in places that no other skater would be allowed. Did this trick change skateboarding? I completely think so. It put skateboarding in everyone's living room. This trick created skateboarders. There are plenty of people that told me they, they started skating because they saw me in X Games. That's the biggest honor, that's the proudest legacy I could possibly leave. I never thought that doing a 900 was gonna move the needle of, of skateboarding because I lived in reality of, a, of being a vert skater. I feel like the timing of it was just so, like, perfect. Call it fate, it had to happen at that X Games. It had to happen spontaneously. It had to happen in that scenario. And so I'm thankful it didn't happen before that. But I fucking gave it my all. I didn't do it because I thought that I was gonna usher skateboarding into a new era. I did it because I was obsessed with it. I did it because I've been trying it for 10 years of my life. It gave me something that, that kept my fire burning. In that time, we were in the very final stages of the game to where you submit it to console manufacturers and you're not allowed to make changes once you've submitted it. When I did the 900, they scrambled to add it to the game. It was finished and they managed to do it because they knew people would expect to see it. That was the best case scenario. None of it was planned. I wish I was that masterful of a planner. The video game was basically like an encyclopedia of skateboarding. It told everybody what the trick names were, told everybody what music was cool, these are the cool pros. I say that because I'm in the game. With all of that, it was that was the perfect storm. And when you're asking me about how did it affect the other riders, they got life-changing money from it and recognition. To me, it's like the video game just basically publicized skateboarding for what we already were, you know what I mean? Prior to that, you had all these crappy skateboard video games. Millions of people got a feeling of what it was like to skate. And Tony Hawk was completely at the forefront of showing that to the masses. That put what we did and do in the public consciousness. Then going to airports and coffee shops and grocery store and wherever, people like, oh, I played you in that video game. Respect from the general public had never been like that. People talking our language for the first time, that tripped me out. Random people come up and they know what a kickflip nose really would be. That's rooted in the 900 in the video game. I'd say the 900 has affected me pretty good. A few years of video game appearances. Yeah, I like the 900. 900 is good. What? In the river. What? Has there ever been a more important clip to a sport ever? I wouldn't put anything ahead of that, given what it did for our sport. I think about the greatest sports moments in my lifetime, and I feel like they're so different to the 900 in so many ways. One is most of the time it's a team, but there's not like one single moment that I think stands up like the 900 does. The 900 probably is one of the, if not the greatest moments in sports history. Can another trick have that kind of impact? I feel like there's no trick that has been chased so desperately since then. If the 900 didn't happen at all, there's all kinds of ramifications. It has changed skateboarding, progressed it in ways that are hard to account for. For all the success that Tony has, the fame has made him more humble and more conscious. Couldn't have happened to a better person, not just for him, but selfishly for all of us. Did it change me? I don't think doing that trick changed me at all because I was still chasing all kinds of tricks after that and obsessing on them and getting hurt. <laughs> I'm still doing the same old shit. I'm just so thankful that for all that he's done for skateboarding, he's celebrated at that same level. Tony has done more for skateboarding than any other individual, like hands down. Wow. This is probably the Bucky Bob. It's amazing. <laughs> I can feel it. So there you have it. 
Perhaps a story you've heard before, perhaps not. But the ripple effects of Tony's 900 are still felt today. Thank you for everything, Tony. And to the audience, see you next time. Here's what I would do want to say, yeah, because I have thought about this and I've never really talked about it. When people say, like, you did it first and once it happens again, it's not a big deal. I'm pretty sure Giorgio did it next and made a huge splash. Sandro Diaz did it at an event in Brazil, and if you watch that, it looks just as exciting as San Francisco. For the record, I never tried a 1080. I cannot get the snap going fakie to spin around three times on any ramp. And here's the big reveal. I am too scared to, to go up a, a mega ramp fakie. <laughs> I've never done it.